Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Child of God podcast, where we are a positive and inclusive space to embrace faith. Let's jump in into this episode. Dear God, we come before you today to thank you for another great episode where we are emitting positivity and your love out into the world, spreading your gospel, and just making sure that all of your children feel loved, encouraged, and to take heart to know that you have them, that you have them secured, you're fighting for them, and that you love them, and that they have no reason to fear for tomorrow because you have it. Amen. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of the Child of God podcast, and today is solely encouragement. We are the beam beacon, and st- I don't know what's after beacon, for encouragement today. Because yes, after having the conversation about waiting on God and taking in that we need to re-examine ourselves, test ourselves, challenge ourselves, we need to work in action, we need to be patient, we need to be kind, we need to be humble, we need to work on the things that God has shown us we need to work on. That is hard. So we need encouragement to keep going. So that is what we're doing today. So the purpose of today's podcast really is to have a conversation with y'all about encouragement. Um, and we want to really encourage and motivate the people that are going through it right now, me being one of those people mentally, I have no idea where I'm going. I am 22 and I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life, but I know that God has it. And so I needed encouragement today. And if you're needing encouragement, I'm happy that you stopped here to get it because I am ready to be a sense of sunshine for you. Um, and I'm ready for Jesus to use me to allow you to see how happy and how much hope you can have in him knowing that he has everything under control. Okay, so first and foremost, literally, how does God encourage us? God encourages is blah, 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 blah. <laughs> God encourages us through stuff like this, through friends, through pr- pastors through his word through um through affirmations through jesus christ he encourages us in so many ways and jesus christ is like probably my biggest encourager to this day but god encourages us in so many different ways and we're kind of going to explore that today and see like how outside of this podcast how outside of social media outlets or outside of other amazing christians that are trying to encourage you how you can encourage yourself and how you can encourage others first part is number one god encourages us through his love and his grace oh my goodness if the careful loneliness was acknowledging that you're not alone all the time and becoming content knowing that it's okay to be alone because you have god that is one of the biggest encouragements ever because i've always been a loner and i don't like being alone it's still something that i I'm challenged with on a daily basis but when I'm able to sit here and confide and talk and just let God know my frustrations it makes it so much better now sometimes do I want to cry a hundred percent but it makes it so much better but what's even like what would come also helps that sense of shame what also helps that sense of loneliness is his grace because when we're alone we might participate in things that we shouldn't. Um, I participated in things that I shouldn't when I was alone, and I felt a lot of shame about it. I felt really bad about it, but when I realized that instead of condemning myself, I should ask for forgiveness, repent, and receive grace, when that swoosh of grace like just covered me, I felt so much better. Because I knew that God wasn't judging me for my flaws. He wasn't judging me for the things that I did wrong. He was loving me for the ability to come to him, ask for forgiveness, repent, and actively change my ways. And so that's kind of encouraging for me. I hope it's encouraging for you to know that and to do those things. Because we're, we are imperfect beings. 
it's going to happen. We're going to have a point when we are tempted and we succumb to that temptation. We don't want to have that point. We don't, no one wants to have that point. We don't want to feel that sense of shame, but that's what the enemy wants. And we're not going to give the enemy what he wants. We're going to give God what he wants, which is to hear us ask for forgiveness and to come back to him, come back to our heavenly father and receive the encouragement and hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So second, how does God encourage us? He encourages us through his word. Let me just tell you, there are so many different ways through his word that God encourages us on a regular basis. And it's it's easily accessible. And if it's not easily accessible, if you are listening to this podcast and you don't have a physical Bible or if you're hearing this podcast, I don't know, somewhere from someone else and you don't have like Internet for the um, what is it called? The Bible app or so on and so forth. Put your address down below and we'll work something out. Yes, I know I put myself out there just now by saying that, but that's okay. We'll work something out. But you can have his encouragement easily acceptable, accessible to you, right? And so with that being said, it's so important to realize that. And so by realizing that, that through his word, we can receive encouragement and positivity and enlightenment, let us look at a few ways that in his word, we receive encouragement. One, which is the most effective for me is through people and experiences. When I look at people and experiences and I see that everything that they went through and how encouraged they were because they knew they had God on their side, it makes me want to be encouraged because I know that I have God on my side. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong, courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever. Listen to me, wherever you go. So I am walking through the valley of the shadows of death. God is with me. I have no reason to have fear. I have no reason to be any less positive than I would be in a sun shining, beaming light because God is the light. He's everything that I need. And so when we're in dark places, remembering that God is that light is going to be such an encourager because I've been in a dark place and I forgot. Silly me, I forgot that God was my light and I just crowded myself in the shame worry confusion and god is like you don't have to do that that's unnecessary because i'm here i'm here let's turn the lights on let's bust out the bible because i'm here so let's talk about joshua a little bit um and if you know in our um me pulled out my bible from nowhere um (laughs) if you have been following the podcast we did a joshua episode last week and There are so many moments where God uses Joshua to encourage the Israelites. And when God encourages Joshua, Joshua obeyed God in every aspect from what I saw. I mean, obviously, like I said, I said this is about everyone. We're imperfect. But he obeyed God. I feel like one of the reasons why he was so secure in obeying God is because God was always there to encourage him. And because he trusted God. Everything that God said, he trusted in what God said. So if you want encouragement, you have to trust the source. And God is the source of all knowledge and understanding. So he's the easiest thing to trust, right? Sometimes it's hard to have faith in some things that we don't see. But I encourage you to look for God in the things that you do see. That is how I started to have faith. So for example... I didn't know much and God would speak to me in a lot of coincidences that I could see. So for example, when I moved to Italy, I have a devotional and I was so indecisive. I didn't know if I should have come. I don't know if it's it's the move or whatever. And one day in my devotionals, he was just like, yeah, this is your time to move to Europe. I was like, I've never been to Europe a day in my life. 
how are you going to be in my devotionals telling me to move to Europe? Or just waking up every morning? That's God. The sun, your eyes, how they focus and unfocus, your hair, him knowing every strand on your head. I mean, how can you not trust someone, something, your heavenly father, who knows all of that about you, everything about you? Now, I can go into a whole spiel about how I've seen God like work in physical ways but we're talking about encouragement today so like i was saying joshua says that verse 1 9 we talked about how god encourages him there then we can talk about verse 24 and they said unto joshua truly the lord hath delivered into our hands all the land for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us that's god using the israelites to encourage joshua On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. The Lord using um, respect from the Israelites to encourage Joshua. I just always feel like he was encouraged. I mean, and, and, and there are so many other people that were always encouraged. David was encouraged. Moses was encouraged. There are so many people and so many experiences in the Bible that people were encouraged to do the good work no matter how hard it seemed no matter how difficult it was because they knew that god was the person back that was that god was who was backing them and so they continued to be encouraged they sinned and they were encouraged still to just move from their ways and be different this um rahab was encouraged when she did the good work knowing that she could trust them and that knowing that god has delivered them and note that knowing that god delivered her because she she's trusted these random two spies and she's like listen i need you to secure me and my family and they did she was encouraged verse um chapter 10 verse 8 and the lord said unto joshua fear them not for i have delivered them into thine hand there shall not a man of them stand before you verse tw- ch- uh, chapter 10 verse 25 and joshua said unto them fear not nor be dismayed be strong and good courage for thus shall the lord do all to your enemies against whom ye fight Joshua, God using Joshua to encourage the Israelites. Chapter 11, verse 6. The Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. God directly encouraging Joshua. And so we see this consistent This is not, this is like Paul is encouraging so many people in his um, letters to different churches. He spent a lot of time encouraging people, actually. Encouragement is literally the stronghold and what keeps us going as a community. And so I feel like it's so important to encourage each other, to kind of encourage ourselves, to make ourselves knowledgeable of God's word so that we can encourage others with this word. And so, two. 2.2 a little i got lost mercies and compassion god uses his word to remind us of his mercies and compassion for us for example psalm 86 verse 15 but you O lord are a good a god of full compassion and gracious long suffering and abundant in mercy and in truth how comforting is that the lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and great in mercy the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Psalms 145, 8 to 9. Now, if you want encouraging, you might as well just bust open the Psalms and just start flipping. Just be like, where is it? Where is it at? Where is it at? Because David went through a lot. And let me just tell you, every time he was going through something, he talked to God. He looked at God for encouragement, and you should do the same. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, 
even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. Ephesians 2, verse 4 to 5. It is a, this is just three verses about mercies and compassion that encourage me, but there are thousands in the Bible that can encourage you. God encourages us through affirmations. And these affirmations are something that you can say to yourself, but you can also use the word to say to yourself as well. Like you can reframe it to um, be encouraging. So just saying like, God loves me. I am not alone because God is with me. Things like that. But also God has affirmed many people in the Bible. Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That was a lot. Prayer and petition, forms of encouragement. With thanksgiving, thanksgiving being being grateful, recognizing what God has done for you, that's encouraging. Being able to present your requests, your worries, and put that burden on God and no longer on yourself is encouraging. And the peace, no longer anxious, but you have peace about what you were worrying about or the troubles or the fights or the trauma that you've been going through. It is all given to God and the peace is received isaiah 41 verse 13 says for i the lord your god hold your right hand it is i who say to you fear not i am the one who helps you he tells you fear not i am the one who helps you so you wake up every morning and you tell yourself and you encourage yourself listen janika don't fear today don't be scared today because god loves you god loves everything about you and the things that he wants you to change he's given you the power to change you just have to do it janika wake up and you go out there into the world and you be loving kind because god is loving and kind to you something like that you could say something like that um but if you all want like an episode on affirmations, I would love to give that to y'all. And we can do like a whole list of affirmations and I can just be that person in your ear with an encouragement episode giving you affirmations every day if you like. Five minute affirmations of encouragement if you like. Let me know down in the comments. Um, and third, but most importantly, through Jesus Christ, God gives us just this overwhelming sense of encouragement because that was god's greatest expression of love oh my foot i was asleep but that is god's greatest um expression of love and for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life we all know john three sixteen, and if you didn't know you know now so that's the epitome of encouragement that is one of the first verses that i learned growing up as a child and it's remained with me ever since it's something that always reminds me that that is something that no one i don't think could ever do but god for me and also there's nothing like jesus christ he knew he was dying for billions, gajillions of people, right? And that's just absolutely amazing. Four, through past and present answered prayers or promises. That's encouraging. You've had promises fulfilled in the past. I know that. I know for a fact. You've had prayers answered in the past. You have had promises made to you. And you know what? That's encouraging, knowing that this that God is there to listen to your prayers, answer them, make promise to, promises to you, fulfill them, love you always. It just doesn't get better than that. And sometimes we forget 
like I said earlier, sometimes we just forget. But I'm not going to forget that. You shouldn't forget that. Because you are important to him. Like, forget everybody else. You are important to God. You are a blessing in this world. And he sees you as such. He doesn't see you as, you know, a disappointment or shame or a person or a child to be judged. He sees you as a child that wants to come home. And you've accepted him into your heart. And you have to live this life on earth until it's time to come home. And he's ready to provide for you while you're here. So, now, God also encourages us through our purpose. Because he's given all of us a purpose. And that purpose encourages us to not only spread God's word, but it also encourages us to have a a goal in life. I mean, a life without goals is kind of dreary, kind of boring. You're kind of sifting through the world effortlessly, not sure where you're going. But that's not that's not what it is. God has given you a divine purpose. You just got to recognize it, work towards it, and be encouraged knowing that he's with you through it. Um, so, why is encouragement important? We kind of just talked about that. But we talked about how God encourages us. But why is it important? It's because John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So the reason why encouragement is important is because we know that things are going to not be great all the time. You know, trials, tribulations, persecution, all of that is coming our way. And with a community such as Christians, we have to encourage each other, knowing that we all share the same similar fate, which is trials, which is tribulations, which is the enemy trying to stop us from being who God truly wants us to be. And so our job for each other is to encourage each other. So... Types of encouragement that we can give to ourselves and others just to close out basically is one, like Thessalonians 4 verse 18 says, therefore, encourage one another with these words. The words of the Bible, like we talked about, encourage each other with verses, with words that not only enlighten ourselves, but also can encourage others throughout their day. If you notice someone struggling or if you know someone having a hard time, encourage them. Use those Bible verses that you know. John 3 and 16 is very short. Try to memorize it and use it and put out that positivity in the world. Um, the First Thessalonians verse 5, 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing so build yourself up with the word but also build others up don't shed or spread negativity but don't be quiet because how is someone going to know that they're doing something good if you don't tell them how is someone going to know that they're spreading the word of god nicely if you don't tell them how do you how does someone know that they were a positive impact in your life if you don't tell them so i encourage you tell them So one, godly inspired affirmations. Use those affirmations for yourself and use those affirmations for others because they do help. They do encourage you. They do give that little extra boost of positivity. Two, Bible verses of encouragement. Always try to read the Bible, to find encouragement within the Bible because it's all there. It's always there you flip one page you see encouragement you flip another page you see lessons you flip another page more encouragement to get through those lessons so you can find it it's it's there and like i said earlier if you need affirmations if you need verses if you need any of that material let me know three acknowledging what we learned and our current and past lessons and blessings Don't forget those lessons and blessings that God has given you and taught you. Because lessons are blessings. They taught you something that you didn't know before. And they're encouraging you to use those lessons as a tool to achieve those blessings. Okay? So, 
what you learned yesterday is definitely going to be a tool that you're going to use later on in life to achieve a blessing that God has already put your name on. Okay? So, just telling you, don't forget. The small things, the big things, the large things, the humongous things, don't forget. I know life passes us by and we continue to see things happening and um, we forget that it happened to us like a month ago and then we see someone else and it's just like, why isn't it happening for us again? No, listen, it's going to happen for you again. It just happened for you a month ago. Give it time, give it patience, give it time. And I have to tell myself that all the time. I'm telling myself that right now. Give it time and continue to encourage yourself and others. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. You are called. And all those things that you're going to do for God and with God and to help others are going to be great, are going to be good. Eternity with God is going to be amazing. So thank y'all for listening to this episode. I'm so happy that I was able to give you encouragement today. Um, let's pray. God, we thank you for your encouragement. We thank you for the people out there who are encouraging us. We're using your word to encourage us. We're using your word to inspire affirmations to encourage others. And we pray that we are those people. Amen. I will see you all next week. I am so happy that I was able to come on here and give you guys some sense of encouragement. Don't forget, if you need any of those tools, please let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Don't forget to rate it, share it, give it to a friend, because we speak with grace here, seasoned with a little salt. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!